What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to make sliders in Figma in accordance with Google's material design guidelines. If you're not familiar with Google material design, I recommend going to their website where you can learn about sliders as well as many other different components within this system. You can even interact with live demos in production to see how they work. Sliders are used to help people change the value of something by dragging it upwards or downwards or specifying a set range. You can use this for volume, brightness, image filters, or other things. The effects of a slider should be immediate when a user is using them to make a selection. There are two types of sliders that we're going to look at today. The first is continuous, which allows users to make a selection that doesn't require a specific value. The second type of slider is discrete. This will display a numeric value upon pressing with the thumb. Let's go ahead and start designing our standard slider. The first thing I'll do here is create a rectangle. We're going to have this be 320 pixels wide and we'll have it be four pixels high. We're going to add 10 pixels of border radius and we're going to change the fill from that gray to this light primary color. You won't have this by default if you're just starting with a new Figma file, but what you can do is click on the file that I've attached in the description to this video and you'll be able to pull components from it and follow along. Let's rename this rectangle background. And then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to go to this width value and hit the divide symbol. And then I'm gonna hit two. And by doing that, I'm going to change the width to 160, which is half of 320. I'm gonna change this to be that primary purple color. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is hit O, create an ellipsis. And I'm going to have this be 20 by 20. I'm gonna change the fill to be this primary. And then I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to go to card shadow. And I'm gonna add that here. And then let's take this, we'll zoom in here and we're gonna have this be centered with this bar. The last thing we need to do here is take this and we're actually going to have this be six pixels rather than four because the selected area should be a bit more prominent than the unselected area. This demonstrates a simple slider that's at 50% of the overall value. We're also going to want to make a few different states of this. We'll rename this circle slider, we'll rename this background fill, and then we're going to take all of this and we're going to create a frame and we will call this slider. And then I'm going to duplicate this down here and I'm going to take this component and I'm going to move it to the right and I'm going to also take this and have it be set to 320 and then I'm going to duplicate this one more time. Let's take this and set the opacity to zero so we'll do double zero and then we're going to take this and we're going to left align it. So now you have a slider that's at the middle point, one that's at the end and then one that's dragged all the way to the left. So this would indicate maybe half volume, full volume or no volume. This shows the normal states for a slider but let's do a couple more versions of this. We're going to have this be disabled as well so let's take this primary and we're going to change it to that gray 600 value and then we're going to take that light primary and we're going to change this to 200. And then we're going to do this one more time. And then I'm going to take these here and I am going to show what this would look like on hover. So let's take these. What I'm going to do for that is I'll duplicate this and I will call this background area hover. And then I am going to remove that hard shadow. And then I am going to unlink this primary style and I am going to change this to be 12% opacity. And then I am going to scale this up to be 32 by 32. And I will do the same thing here. So Let's make sure that's properly centered. And then I'll move this to be behind the slider. And then I will do the same thing for the one that's dragged all the way to the left. So now we have our normal, our disabled, and our hover state. But now let's also create versions of this for focused. So I'm going to duplicate this. And I am going to take this and size it up to 40 by 40. And then I am going to increase the opacity from 12 to 24%. Finally, I will duplicate this one more time. And then I am going to take this and I am going to increase the opacity to 32% and that will be our pressed state. So now we have normal, disabled, hover, focused, and pressed. I'm going to take all these frames and I'm going to rename them to be more accurate to the state that they're in. Now that we've got all these, I am going to create a component set. So I'll go up here, click on this, and I will call this slider. I'm going to create a property called amount and the default will be half. And then I am going to take another property and I will call this state. Let's go ahead and select all the ones that are at half. Then we'll go ahead and make sure that all the ones that are at full are at full. So let's rename this to be full. And then I've got all the ones that are empty and we'll rename that empty. And let's take all the disabled ones and we will call these disabled. I'll take all the ones that are disabled and I'll set their state to disabled. I'll take all the ones that are at hover, rename this to just hover, and I'll select all of these and change the state to hover. And then I will select all the ones that are focused and then let's select these and call those focused. And then let's take all of these, which are pressed, 
And rather than those having individual names, we will have those all be the pressed state. So now if I go to the drop down, there's five state options and there's also three amount options. So now that we have all of these states laid out, I'm going to take this original component, bring it over here. You can see now that we can change the state really easily to be a bunch of different types. And we can also change the amount to be full, empty, or half. Now that I've made my standard slider, let's make a discrete slider, which is essentially the same, but it has steps that are along the way that indicate the values that you can have rather than selecting any value. I'm gonna take that slider that I had before and I'm going to change this to say discrete and then I'm going to duplicate this ellipsis here. Then I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle here, but I'm gonna set the width to be two and the height to be two. And then I am going to horizontally center it and then I'm gonna change this background to be that light primary. And then we'll have this be two away from the left top and bottom. I am going to make eight of these ellipses and I'm going to make sure that the ones over here we actually change the color from that light primary back to the primary and then this is a little too close here so let's move this over one and then let's take this and we will align it with one of these dots and then let's take this and make sure that it doesn't exceed that and now we have our discrete slider I will rename this normal and then I'm going to duplicate this down here and I'm going to change the primary to that 600 and I'm going to change that light primary to 200 so this indicates the disabled state for this component so we'll call this disabled and then let's duplicate this again and then we will make the hover version which I can actually go back over to my slider component and I am going to take this. I'm going to make the hover, the pressed, and the focused states for this. And then I am going to take this, which is the hover state, and then I'm going to move that to be behind that slider. And then let's have this align with that other circle. And then I'm going to duplicate that move it here. But we'll again change the size to be 40 by 40. And then we're going to increase the opacity to 24%. And then I'm going to do this same thing here, but the opacity will be 32% instead of 24. So now I have the normal, the disabled, the hover, the pressed, and the focus states. But there's still one more thing I need to do because this is associated with the specific value rather than it being a thing that you can just slide up and down. I'm going to increase the spacing between these components to 80. Let's delete this and then I am going to create a new text layer. Uh, let's have this say 45 and then I am going to change this to be SF Pro and then let's have the weight be semi bold and let's set the size of this to be 14 by 20 with minus 1% letter spacing rather than minus 6. Let's actually change this to regular and then I am going to apply auto layout and then I'm going to change the horizontal padding to 8 pixels and I'm going to change the vertical padding to be 2 pixels and then I'm going to change this fill to be 600 and then we'll change this text to be white let's change the border radius from zero to two and then i am going to quickly take the pen tool and i'm going to make a little triangle here and i'm going to hit shift x to make this a fill rather than a stroke let's change the width to be 16 pixels and then i'm going to have this be that same gray let's take this point and we'll change that to be two pixels of border radius and then let's take this and we will center it along this component and i think that's a little bit too wide so let's change the width to be 14 pixels and we'll again make sure that that is all aligned and then I am going to create a frame here and we will call this pop-up and then I'm going to add an effect here which is the card shadow and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to apply it to the focused state first I'm gonna make sure that that's four pixels away and then I actually think this is a bit too round so let's change this to be one pixel border radius and then we'll do the same thing for this shape here and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to apply it to the pressed and the hover states as well. And now that I have all that, I am going to make a couple of other versions of all of these. So again, let's change the spacing here to say 208. And then let's duplicate this once and have the spacing be, let's say, 40 pixels away from each other. And then we'll duplicate that again. Then I'm going to take this value. I'm going to move it all the way to the left. And then let's delete this. And then we'll change all of these other circles to be that primary purple. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that for the hover, the pressed, and disabled and focus states as well. So we'll move this all the way to the left, zero. And then let's take these circles and we will move those all the way over. And then we'll take the number indicators and move those over as well. And then we will take this purple bar here and we'll delete that for each of these. And then let's take these circle fills and make sure that those are all the primary rather than the light primary. We'll do the same thing here. Those, do that from 
light primary to primary, and finally we'll do it on here as well. Now that I've got that, let's go ahead and make the full version as well. So let's move this all the way over and we'll have this be expanded over too. And then we'll take all of these ellipses and we're gonna change this to be that light primary. And then rather than doing this work all over again, I'm gonna take all of these and I'm going to actually delete that from this hover state. And then I'm just going to paste this in like that. And then I will do the same thing for the pressed state. So let's go ahead and delete all these. And then finally, we'll do that for the focused state. So again, we'll remove all these and then we will paste this in. Now that I have that, let's take the actual slider head as well as that outer area, as well as the indicator here for the focused state, the pressed state and the hover state. And then we'll take the slider itself as well as the little indicator. And then we will move all of these all the way over, right? This one is at 300. So we'll make sure that the slider is at 300 as well. So now we've got all of those all the way to the right and let's finally do this for disabled as well so we'll expand this and then we'll take all these fills and we'll make sure that they are all at grade 200 and now you can see we have the normal version the disabled version the hover version the pressed version and the focused version of the discrete slider i'm going to select all of these and i'm going to again create a component set and we'll call this first property state and then we will create a second property and we will call that amount and the default will be half create a property here all of these are already set at half you can see let's select the empty ones and we'll rename the amount to empty and then we'll go to full and we will rename this to full You'll notice that within the disabled state, I forgot to remove the bar here. So let's take that and then we will grab the individual filled dots here and we will make sure to change the background to be that gray 600 rather than 200. Finally, I'm going to select all the normal components, make sure that they're normal. I will take all the disabled ones, make sure that they're disabled. All of the hover ones and make sure that they're hovered. All of the pressed ones, make sure that they're pressed and all of the focused ones and make sure that they're focused. If I take one of these components here, I can bring this over. Let's actually first rename this discrete slider. I'm gonna take this slider, bring it over. And if I go to disabled, it'll change to disabled. If I go to focused, it'll change to focused. And I can easily switch between half, empty, and full. And that's it. You now have a slider and a discrete slider component that you can show a half, full, or empty indication. And you can also show the hover over that shows the value associated with that. These values aren't accurate, so let's go ahead and switch that. We're gonna take these and make them be centered text rather than left aligned. So let's change it to zero. And then you'll see that that's not aligning. So so let's take this little box and we will move that over to make sure it's centered. And then we'll also change this value here. Let's make it centered again. And then we will set this to be 100, 100, 100. And then I will make sure that these are centered aligned. And that's it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of slider components, how they work, when to use a normal one versus a discrete one, and how to create your own next time you're building a design system in Figma that requires you to align with Google's material design systems. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.